everybody, it's Carolyn Bloom from Bloom Handmade Studio. So happy to be back on the channel here today to talk to you about my latest finished object, which is this um, embroidered sweater that I purchased from Eileen Fisher about a month ago. I just posted an episode yesterday on my channel about the construction of the sweater and where I found it and Eileen Fisher's um, commitment to reducing, reusing, and renewing pieces. So if you're interested in seeing the sweater in its original form, by all means hop back into my channel and take a look at that, that first post. But for today, what I thought I would do is just talk a little bit about why I opted to do this particular kind of embroidery and kind of give you a tour of how the embroidery works with the original structure of the sweater. When I first purchased the sweater, I had had visions of doing really intricate stitching all along this raglan sleeve from neckline all the way down to, to the wrist and playing around with it, just doing some embroidery swatching, if you will, similar to how you do when you're knitting or crocheting, I very quickly realized that embroidery on this particular sweater, on this particular fabric, was going to change the drape tremendously. Um, as you can see, it's a rather sheer fabric. I'm wearing a camisole underneath this. And so doing a lot of intricate, tiny stitching made this drape pretty much non-existent. Um, this sweater is an extra small, and I am not an extra small person. Um, my daughter would have been a better person to model this today, but she's studying for exams right now and not really so interested in hopping on the podcast. So here I am modeling it, and just take my word for it that really intricate work was going to make it so these sleeves were um, pretty much gonna prevent the arm from moving, which may have been beautiful to look at, but not so fun to wear. So pretty quickly, I dismissed that idea of tiny little sashiko type stitching and found myself migrating toward doing long stripes, just basically working through um, corridors of knit stitches, running stitching up and down through one line of knit stitches from the top all the way down to the bottom. As you can see here, let me just go ahead and scoot in a little bit. As you can see here, I ran those stitches. There's one that's a little stretched out. I ran those stitches just up and down. I skipped over three rows of knit stitches and under one, over three and under one, just staying in the same column all the way up and down the sleeve. I did that on obviously both sides as well as front and back. For the front, I kept the stitching, the columns of stitches even, um, I believe it was 15 stitches in between each of these rows or columns of, of stitches. And then as I worked toward the waist and toward the, the side of the body, I made the columns a little bit more narrow to give the, illu the illusion at least of a waist. I need, I need all the help I can get in that regard. Um, so, I kind of like how it's a nod to a Yankees uniform, a raglan sleeve in all white with stripes, kind of makes me think of the New York Yankees. I don't know if that's because that's my family's favorite team or not, but that's kind of where I was heading as I incorporated some of these lines. Um, let's see, the other thing I wanted to just mention is that buying this off the shelf, one of the things that I was really interested in was actually the inside of the sweater. And the reason for that is I was curious to know whether or not there would be seams to hide my ends. If you're interested in doing this kind of thing, I encourage you to not only appreciate the outside of the sweater, but also to look at the inside of the sweater. And I'll, I'll add into this video here how I did my seaming. But when I came to the end of the long strings, my long yarn ends, I would just basically whip stitch them into the seams of the sweater and hide them away and make them look nice and tidy. Um, of course, you don't want to ha have to do that every time you do any sort of stranding. And so, as you can see, as I mentioned, it's an extra small sweater. Look, look, I have very long arms. As you can see, this is this isn't really sized to fit me given that it ends mid, mid forearm. But 
as you can see here, when I would work from one stripe to the next and I didn't have a seam to work with, I would simply whip stitch along the edge of the sweater and then resume going back up this column right here. And then I whip stitched along here. I believe I was probably on the inside, whip stitched over to there and then worked my way back down. So a couple things to keep in mind, just to reiterate. Um, Think about drape when you're looking for a piece. You want to try and find something that has ideally a little positive ease, meaning that it's perhaps a little bit bigger than the ultimate wearer, as opposed to this one, which is a little smaller than what I would typically go for. Get something a little bit larger because you're going to be doing some embroidery that's going to make the piece a little stiffer. It's going to make the piece feel a little smaller. Think about the fabric itself and what the drape feels like and how, if it's already a little bit stiff, if there's already a lot of cabling, if there's already a lot of detail to it, adding embroidery to it is gonna make that drape even more stiff, which is one of the reasons why I like a straight stockinette type of sweater like this. It had a very easy going feel to it on the hanger and I knew that I could play around with it and come up with something that wouldn't change that beautiful nature um, by adding more more stitching to it. And then the other thing too is look again at the inside and see if there are places where you can hide your ends when you come to the end of the yarn that you're you're embroidering with. So this is the sweater. I've got some clips of how it looked as it was a work in progress going from an all white plain sweater to what it is today. I'm gonna go ahead and put those in the video here right now. If you do opt to do this kind of work, I hope you'll share your results with me on Instagram. You can find me over there. I'm at Bloom Handmade Studio. And by all means, feel free to use that, hash, that hashtag, embroidery on stockinette. I'd really love to see what you're doing with your knits to make them totally customized to your preferences. Okay, thanks for tuning in guys. See you soon.